situations and their previous knowledge about the Bible is different. This is why there isn't one correct order of topics. A Bible study that one correct order of topics. A Bible study that would be very fitting for one person may be completely inappropriate for someone else. So po, for giving a Bible study, there are no correct orders of giving a Bible study. So if kware po iOS to Android po, yung charger po ng iOS, di po pwede sa Android. So giving a Bible study, um, it has no order. Um, some people are different in understanding the Bible. So if you're giving a Bible study to one person that don't know about that thing, so it's very more much that the person will know. But if the person know about that thing and you've given a Bible study, um, it just acknowledged to his knowledge. So if a person doesn't know much about the Bible, it is very easy to overburden them by using too many verses in a Bible study. They will have difficulty finding the text and might not understand the context of each statement. In this, it is better to start with stories and parables. The advantage to this approach is that the person only has to find one Bible text and stories are easier to understand. So, giving a Bible study that, don't know, that the person don't know about that Bible, um, madali lang po siya bigyan ng Bible study because po, hindi po niya alam yung Bible. So, bibigyan mo lang po siya ng verse, text, para po sa uluin or basahin po, uh, mabasa niya po yun kasi madali lang po kasi hindi niya po alam yung Bible. So, in principle 2 po, first deal with salvation and then with the law. As Adventists, we sometimes tend to put the law and the Sabbath in the foreground. But therefore, a person can delight in God's law. They have to first know and love Jesus. So, by having a Bible study po, ang unahin po dapat po natin ay Jesus love po, bago po ang Ten Commandments. So, putting first the salvation or the crucifixion of Christ for the person to know Christ more. So, this is why it is very important to first speak about salvation, afterwards pick up the theme of the law. If someone asks you, Prior to that, why you keep the Sabbath, you will, of course, give an answer. So, while giving a Bible study, if someone asks us, why do we keep the Sabbath, we need to explain and we will answer. But if we answer, we need to have um, fully brief the person. So, not only the law of God that we will say, but from the background of the law of God. So... To the Gentiles, he, Paul, preaches us their only hope of salvation, but did not at first have anything definite to say upon the law. But after their hearts were warmed, the presentation of Christ as the gift of God to our world and what was comprehended in the work of our Redeemer. It, in the cost, costly sacrifice of manifest the love of God to men, in the most eloquent simplicity, he showed the lo that love for all mankind, Jew and Gentile, that they thought that they might be saved by surrendering their hearts to him. So, one of the example is si John po. Um, while Jesus is here on earth po, the disciples that he teach is first, he teach about the gift of God to our world. And after, and so on, so on, the journey of the 12 disciples, he teach the law of God. The plan of holding Bible readings have a heaven-born idea. There are many both men and women who can engage in this branch of missionary labor. Workers may thus be developed who will become mighty men of God. So by this po, siya sabi po, um, Tayo po ay isa po sa mga disciples si God. And we are the workers, means missionaries po. Um, we need to preach the words of God 
um, day by day. So, when we um, um, nakasalubong po isang person and he asked, um, what is your religion? Second, why do you keep the Sabbath? Maybe they know the seven Adventists. Um, we need to interpret that and answer that question because we are workers of God and we are and we have the task to deliver the message of Him. Principle number three, don't prematurely cover topics which could create barriers. When we study the Bible with people, we definitely want them to understand the three angels' message. But we have to be careful that we prematurely bring up topics which would create a barrier between us and our friends. So po, when we have a Bible study, dapat po tayo ay, um, yung siyasabi po natin ay di masyado po mga ka-offensive sa kaila. Kasi po, minsan po, may dating religion po sila or na religion po sila na siyasabi po natin minsan po na ka-offense po sila. So, kailangan po natin um, parang ma-sure up po ang siyasabi po natin para po maging comfort- compatible po sa kanila para hindi po tayo maniglek or parang hindi po tayo ma-subdued po ng kailang naiisip. What's special about these Bible studies is that they earn in the form a monologue. A teacher selects good Bible text about a topic and prepares good questions. The student then reads the Bible text and the teacher asks the questions to help the student find the answer by himself in the Bible text. So yun po, isa pong maganda pong example po. Um, when a teacher finds the question, he helps the students to find the answer. So kung tayo po ay preachers, we are the teacher po. And the students are who were who we were preaching. So, when we say the Bible text, we will help them in the Bible to find that Bible text. So, in laboring a new field, do not think it your duty to say at once to the people. We are Seventh-day Adventists. We believe that the Seventh-day Adventists is the Sabbath. We believe in the immortality of the soul. So, saying po na tayo po ay Seventh-day Adventists, we believe in the Sabbath, we should keep that word and spread that word to others. In principle number four, speak clearly about salvation through Jesus Christ. We cannot assume that people already know Jesus and are converted simply because they are members of a church. Our most important aim is to bring our friends into a saving relationship with Jesus Christ. We want to help them love Jesus above anything else and to make a complete decision to follow Him. So po, yes, I po sa principle number four po, um, hindi po, ang kailangan po natin mostly deliver si Jesus Christ po. Hindi po natin alam yung person kung kilala, po natin, kilala niya po si Jesus Christ. So by saying po, by having a Bible study, we need to most deliver Jesus Christ Himself. Principle number five po, explain Jesus' central and unique role in the plan of salvation. The principal theme in the Bible is Jesus Christ, both in the Old and New Testament. When we look at the preaching of the first Christians, we see how clearly they spoke about Christ, death, his resurrection, his ministration in the heavenly sanctuary, his second coming, and his divinity. These topics need a central place in a Bible study series. So, Pa um, says in principle number five, explain Jesus' central unique role in the plan of salvation. So po, while having a Bible study, uh, explain rin po natin ang ginawa po ni Jesus Christ having, having His life on earth. So He did His death for us to be saved, His resurrection, and the second gift of life. These are the themes Christ crucified for our sins. 
Christ who is sent from the dead, Christ our, di- Christ our intercessor before God. So po, as I have said po, um, Jesus Christ needed to be the most important while having the Bible study. Principle number six, cover prophetic topics. God has given us a Seventh-day Adventist, a special prophetic message we should prepare the world for Christ's second coming. We have many things in common with others, Christians, but our prophetic view of the Bible distinguishes us from others. We know about the conflict between Christ and Satan regarding God's law, how it began in heaven, how it continued here on earth, and how it will end one day. People need this comprehensive prophetic view as found in the books of Daniel and Revelation. So, Pa says in principle number six, cover prophetic topics. So, Pa, um, while having a Bible study, Pa, um, for principle number six, um, give a prophetic topics. Um, while um, the great controversy or the life of Christ here on earth or how it began, Christ and Satan. So, ministers should present the sure word of prophecy as the foundation of the faith of Seventh-day Adventists. The prophecies of Daniel and Revelation should have carefully studied and in connection with them the words, Behold the Lamb of God which taketh away the sin of the world. So, Pa, um, having, a Bi- have, uh, having a Bible study, we need to have um, prophetic topics. Um, prophetic topics is mostly found in Daniel and Revelation. And we should review that verses within Daniel and Revelation to, uh, to by having a, pro- having a Bible study with others, we should deliver proper prophetic topics with that verse. In principle number seven, preach the whole truth. In his farewell words to the Ephesians, Paul said, How I keep back nothing that, has, that was helpful, but proclaim it to you, and taught you publicity and from house to house. Acts 20, verse 20. He withheld nothing from them, but rather faithful preach the whole message even when some parts were hard to accept. In the past, as well, as well as in the present, there are parts of Jesus' message and are hard for people to accept. But these parts are important for people to make a clear decision. So, it says in principle number seven, preach the whole truth. So, even the truth hurts for them, we need to preach about it. Um, we should not eat um, pork or the food that we shall eat. Even though they eat it, we should preach the truth even though they deny the truth or their religion deny the truth. Preachers should know scriptures to preach the truth as it is found in God's word. Let the truth cut. I have been shown that the that why ministers have not more success is they are afraid of hurting feelings, fearful or not being courteous, and they lower the standard of truth and conceal, if possible, the peculiarity of our faith. So sometimes preachers um, lower the truth while they are preaching. So sometimes they preach um, more, not of the truth, but lower the standard of the Seventh-day Adventists because they are afraid if, we, if they are preaching to other people, the people will not listen to them because they know what they are right, because if they are right. Crucial steps. We are, when we study the Bible with people, it is important to be aware of the steps of faith they will encounter. When a person decides to become Jesus' disciple and part of his end-time church, he, she 
will not get there in one step. It will take many successive and processive st steps when we consider the order of our Bible studies. We must keep these steps in mind. So, having a Bible study and the people who have Bible study agree to be a seven Adventist, um, there are crucial steps with that. First, they will start in reading the Bible. Second, training the Bible. Third, trusting God. Fourth, connecting with the discipleship. Fifth, law of obedience, death, and resurrection. And the last, baptism and church. So by that po, meron po tayong mga crucial steps while having, while having a preaching. So yun po ang ating I follow for today. Magandang umaga po sa lahat. Happy Sabbath. Ayan. Kamusta po kayo? Kasi maubusan na po tayo ng oras. So dahil review lang naman to, papaspasan lang natin, bibilisan lang po natin because I expect everyone naman po is nabasa to, naaral to sa kanya-kanya nilang mga tahanan during this whole week. So tayo po ay nasa lesson 10 ng last quarter of this year. Sino po ang nagagalak at makakatapos na naman tayo ng isang taon? Konting-konti na lang, sabi nga in modern term, konting kembot at tapos na ang 2019. So ang lesson 10 po natin ay tungkol sa worshiping the Lord. Ito po yung, um, nung natapos pong gawin ulit yung wall ng Jerusalem sa panahon ni Nehemiah, uh, ginawa po nila yung dedication and worship para yung wall na yon is inangat nila or itinas nila into dedication for the Lord. So sabi rito sa ating second slide, despite the troubles, the wall of Jerusalem was finally rebuilt. And mula ang Nehemiah 12, uh, chapter 12 verses 27 to 47, tells the dedication of the wall and the joy of the people. Yung mga kasihan po ng mga tao nung panahon na yon nung kanilang ma-dedicate yung wall of Jerusalem. So, may mga, uh, ang points po sa lesson na to, una po yung gathering ng Levites, pangalawa yung purification, pangatlo po yung two choirs na involved during the worshiping, the sacrifices, and last, yung the joy of the priests and Levites. Ano po bang nangyari diyan sa the gathering of the Levites? So, nung i-dedicate daw po ang wall, tinawag po lahat ng Levites in a different area para po magsama-sama po doon sa Jerusalem. And uh, i-celebrate po nila yung uh, kagalakan, kasiyahan, at pagpapasalamat na may kasamang pag-aawitan during po ng dedication na yun. Ano pong naging trabaho or task ng mga Levites during that time? Meron pong naatas. Lahat po sila. Meron pong kanya-kanyang ganap. So, meron pong naatasan na aawit. Meron pong naatasan na tutugtog. Yung iba naman po, sila mag-prepare ng instruments. Sila po yung mag-take care of it. And yung mga clothes naman, yung mga kasuotan, may iba po na yun ang naging uh, task nila. Okay po? So, ang, ang trabaho po ng Levites is to genuinely uh, 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 ma-express the best that they can yung kanilang pagpapuri para po nakaka-inspire sa mga tao sa paligid. Ma-aflip po yung kanilang emotion spiritually para kapag nag-worship sila, mas damang-dama po at mas totoo yung kanilang ginagawang pagpipraise uh, pag and worship sa Panginoon. So pagkatapos po nung uh, gathering, sa so next slide po natin, ipapaliwanag yung purification. Then, the priests and Levites purified this themselves and purified the people, the gates, and the wall. Ano po ba yung purification? Ang um, pagkakaintindi po natin dito is lilinisin natin ang ating mga sarili 
uh, aalisin po kung ano man yung uh, ikiklens. Pero uh, yung rite na to, itong ritual na to, is not, is not more on forgiveness. More on aalisin po and ipurify yung sarili natin. Cleansing of evil. Um, sabi po kasi rito, mababago po ng Panginoon ang ating isipan kapag ka na-accept natin sa sarili natin na nalinis tayo sa lahat ng mga kasamaan, nalinis tayo sa ating mga pagkakasala. Kasi kung aware daw po tayo na tayo ay napatawad ng Panginoon, na tayo ay nalinis, mas, mas um, maganda ang ating pag-worship. Uh, we can respond more with joy and gladness and mas ma-appreciate natin yung ginagawa natin pag-worship sa Kanya kasi kumbaga guiltless ang bawat isa sa atin. Sumunod po na slide. Yan. Ito na po yung the two choirs. So noong time na to, hinati po sila. Nagkaroon po ng dalawang choirs. Yung isa po is led by Ezra. And the other choir po is si Nehemiah naman. So ang nangyari is yung isang group ni Ezra sa kabilang side uh, um, iikot. Yung isa naman po, yung led by Nehemiah sa kabila. So, parang ang dating is covered nila both the walls. And magpapangabot po sila, bababa, and papasok po sa Temple of God. So, uh, sabi rito, uh, susunod po sa choir yung mga tao. Mag-worship, kakanta, and mag-bow down po to pray. And uh, yun yung, ano raw po ang kahalaga ng music? sa pag-worship. Uh, alam naman po natin na hanggang ngayon, ginagawa po natin yung pag-aawitan, lalo na kapag ka mas malakas, mas masaya, mas maganda po yung nagiging worship natin. Kasi sabi po rito, music has always been a tool to raise our thoughts towards God. And it can enhance our worship experience. Mas napapaganda po ang ating um, uh, pagsamba. And sabi rito, we will continue praising God with music in heaven and in the new earth. Um, to make a point po, siguro for personal experience, yung music po kasi siguro naman lahat tayo, may iba-ibang epekto sa atin. Ako po kasi nung nasa office pa ako before, pag stress na stress ako, maliban sa kating ko, uh, worship song po ang panlaban ko. So, dumarating sa point na talagang naiinis ka na eh. Minsan ayaw mo nang humarap sa boss mo. So, ang ginagawa ko, uupo po ako, kakan, um, makikinig ng worship song. Ang um, gustong-gusto ko dyan, yung What a Friend We Have in Jesus. Ayan. Tapos, blessings. Kapag ka medyo kumalma na ako through worship, nakapag-pray na rin ako noon, tatawag na yung boss ko through Skype, through video call. Ayan na, maganda na ulit yung aura. Hindi na halata na galit ako. Nakakapag-accent na tayo. Siyempre, kailangan na sasabayan natin yung mga boss natin. So, ang akin po, iba talaga yung music. Lalo na kung gagamitin natin sa pag-worship. Mas na-encourage tayo, mas nagiging confident tayo. And, iba yung uh, kasiyahan na idinudulot sa atin. Natutulungan tayo in times of trouble. So, Magpasa hanggang ngayon, sana po eh, lagi nating ituloy na gamitin ang pag-awit ng may kasiglahan, ng may kagalakan para po papurahin ang ating Panginoon. So, after po nung two choirs, meron naman po yung the sacrifices for the next slide. Yan. Also that day, they, uh, they offered great sacrifices and rejoiced for God had made them rejoice with great joy. The women and the children also rejoice. So, ang, ang point po dito is, after po nung kantahan, awitan, kasayahan, parang may, may solemn portion po na ginawa nilang pag-sacrifice. Kasi kailangan po itong gawin. Ang sacrifices mo is very symbolic. Para po kasi, ito yung foundation ng pag-worship po sa, sa temple noon. And... Yung purification, worship, and music, pointless daw yun kung hindi magagawa itong portion na to, yung sacrifice. Kasi it's a symbol po na, na tayo ay 
yung ginawa pong sacrifices ng Panginoon, na the Lamb of God who takes away the sin of the world. So, Jesus would be the center of our worship. By His death at the cross, yung sacrifice po na ginawa niya na yun, He is worthy to receive our gratitude in praise and worship. So, um, lagi po natin gagawin, kapag nag-worship po tayo, it involves singing, music, joy, and reverently bowing down before the Lord in prayer. Okay po. Sumunod so, na slide. Okay. The joy for the priests and Levites. Do the rejoice over the priests and Levites who ministered. Um... Ang trabaho daw po ng mga priest noon is symbolized by the interception, intercession of Jesus at the heavenly sanctuary. So sila po yung parang representation of Jesus during that time. And yung mga Levites, uh, assistant sila para ma-deliver po yung other tasks ng pag-worship. So alalay sila nung mga priest that time. Pero sa time natin ngayon, wala naman na po tayong priesthood. Kasi naniniwala tayo na ang pinaka-priest na po natin, si Jesus na. Pero meron pa rin po tayong mga modern Levites. So, sino po ba yung mga modern Levites na yan? Um, eto po sila. Yung ating mga pastors, ministers, ikino, uh, ministers ikinoma, ikinomically, and spiritually. So, sa panahon ngayon, hindi naman na natin kailangan ng priesthood. Nandiyan na po tayong nakatingin sa ating Panginoon directly kay Jesus. Ang kailangan po natin suportahan uh, according dito ay ang ating mga modern Levites, ang ating mga ministro, ang ating mga pastor. Kasi po, nung panahon, panahon din ni Nehemiah, meron din pagkakataon na mahina ang naging suporta sa mga Levites that time. So, Um, may time na kailangan nilang bumalik sa mga trabaho nila, hindi nila nagagawa minsan yung kanilang mga task kasi they have to work so that they can um, uh, doon, mag-earn kasi kailangan nila for their daily living din. No? So no choice sila, babalik sila, gagawin nila yung mga work nila kasi during that time, kulang din yung mga nakukuha nilang tithes and offerings. So hindi sapat para ma-accommodate yung needs ng mga Levites. So, sa panahon natin ngayon, alam naman po natin na marami pong gawain ang ating church, marami pong mga mission yung mga pastors, yung mga ministers. So, tayo po bilang mga miyembro, ang kailangan po daw ay supporta and encouragement. So, kung maari po, wag tayo makakalimot sa ating mga tithes and uh, offering kasi it will be the fund foundation po ng ating churches, para magawa yung mga mission nila and to always support our modern Levites nga po. And for our takeaway, uh, educate the soul to cheerfulness, to thankfulness, and to the expression of gratitude to God for the great love where He, he had loved us. Christian cheerfulness is the very beauty of holiness. <clears throat> Sorry po. As children of the light, God would have us cultivate a cheerful, happy spirit that we may show forth the praise of Him who had called us out of darkness into His marvelous light. Uh, uh, that is according to uh, Mrs. Ellen G. White. And in every assembly of the saints below are the angels of God listening to the thanksgiving, the praise, the supplication that is offered by the people of God in testimonies. Songs and prayers. Let them remember that their praises are supplemented by the choirs of the angelic hosts above. So, ang nice ko lang pong sabihin dito is, wag po tayong makalimot na tuwing mag-worship po tayo. Aawit po tayo ng may kasiglahan, mag-pray po tayo ng may katotohanan. Um, totoo lang po and walang, walang, walang pag-aanilangan tayong aawit at mag-pray sa ating Panginoon. And sabi kasi dito, Uh, tayo ay anak ng Panginoon kung tayo ay matut- marunong na magpasalamat, mag-appreciate at uh, cheerful. Ano, ka, maligaya. Maligayang tignan, uh, ma- masiglang tignan ang bawat isa sa atin. So, ayun lang po para po sa lesson review natin this week. Happy Sabat po muli.
Tayo po ay uh, dadako na sa ating lesson uh, review per family. So meron po tayong mga nakatalang mga discussion points. So bibigyan po namin kayo ng mga 15 minutes to discuss within your family. So tinatawagan po ang mga uh, group leaders atin na pong uh, i-facilitate ang ating group discussion.